I am an 11 year professional athlete. And what I'm going to do is <laughs> give you perspective from the athletes, give you a point of view from the athletes about their experiences, their journey from their own mouth. So tonight joining me will be Lorraine. She is a British Olympic long jumper, and I'm super excited about having her on here just to share what she's doing in the sport. And also another guest named Mouthpiece, who is the voice of Venice Beach basketball. You know, that, that VVBB is just, it's, it's a tongue twister. So I'm excited to have them join me tonight, and I'm looking forward to hearing about what they're doing and their respective sports and how they're just changing the dynamics and the culture of, of sport as we know it. And so I'm super excited about that. And I'm pretty sure I told y'all about myself. I'm going to let y'all have, have the floor when my guests come. But thank you for joining me tonight. What were you thinking? I'm super, super, super I guess I'm not going to say it again because I'd be like three times, but you know, three times the charm. Okay. So I don't know when my guests are going to be joining me, but how y'all doing? How's y'all evening going? I'm kind of, I had a, I had a great practice and it, it's made me sleepy. So I cannot wait to hit the hay. <laughs> Not more, though, than having our guest on tonight. What did y'all do this weekend? It was a lot of track and field on the Diamond League in Birmingham, the Duval County track meet, which I competed in. I didn't run that well, and that's okay. But there were some great performances from one of our normal co-hosts, Devin. He won the hurdles. He ran... 1317. What else was there? Lena Irby ran pretty well in the in the 400. I would say very well, but as athletes, I know a lot of times we we kind of criticize us and we're like, I could have ran faster, but considering the conditions, she ran really well. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? How you doing? Good. How are you? I can hear you, but it's like kind of messed up a little bit right now. Okay. I wonder if that's me. Oh, this is crazy. I can I can hear you, but you kind of chopping up on my side. Okay. So I'm trying to get it together. Okay. It's... <laughs> yeah. That's all right. This is crazy. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to get it together because it was just working fine. Now all of a sudden they want to start going crazy on me. Okay. It's the timing of it all. I got in here early. I did everything I needed to do. And it was true. <laughs> Technology. That is really how it goes. Uh, well, we can hear you. Your video is just clear, working fine. But you can't hear us. Yeah. Me. I can right, hear like you. I can hear you saying what you're saying. Huh? Right. This is crazy. Let me let me try something else. Let me try okay. something else. <laughs> I gotta try something else because the reception is bad. All right. All right. Can you hear me outside now? I could always hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. All right. I'm fine. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Let's see. I can hear you now. Okay, you can hear me. Lorraine, hello. Hello. Hello, that's blurry. Let me Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> it still looks blurry, right? Yeah. It's like, it looks like... 
Oh, that's bad. There we go. There we go. <laughs> how you doing? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. You and mouthpiece. Hello. You got to go back inside, mouthpiece, because it's blurry. Yeah, I could hear. I could hear him. I yeah, can hear him see him. He it's fine. So. Well, no, while he tries to, yeah, go back in. <laughs> like, I don't know if he can hear me, though, because he said he was saying it was I was kind of going now. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little about yourself. We, what I normally do is I tell the athletes, I'm going to give you 60 seconds to tell me your life story. Yeah. Yes. And so let me get my timer, get uh, my timer going. <laughs> and let's see what we get. Ready? Go. All right. So I was born and raised in London. I lived in London for the majority of my young life in South London. And then I got recruited to come to the United States um, for university. I um, moved to US when I was like 19, about 19. Okay. I moved to Texas. I went to te- Texas Christian University. After staying at Texas Christian University, I graduated and then I continued to live there for a few years until I moved to Change Coach and I moved to Atlanta, which is where I reside right now. Um, I've been to the Olympics twice. I've been to World Championships um, 2013, 2015, 2013, 2015, 20, no, I didn't go in 2019, that would be a lie. 2013, 2015, 2017, and yeah, I can't remember what else, sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. How many seconds has it been now? Your time is now up, but that's okay. okay. I still want you to tell us, what did you get your degree in? Um, film, TV, and digital media. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Bob, we want to get, we got to get Lorraine in, in, the, in behind the scenes. This is what she, this is what she does. Let's do it. Let's do it. Right. Oh my goodness. And so how was that move? Tell us a little bit about that move going from most of your life being in another country and moving to the United States. What's the biggest adjustment you feel like you had to make coming here at 19? Um, I think... For me, the biggest thing was obviously moving to a town where I'd never, because I never went on a visit. I went on a visit to Texas A&M and I went on a visit to Nebraska, but I never actually went on a visit to TCU. Okay. So I guess even when I moved to TCU, I didn't have any family in um, Texas or anything like that. So it's kind of like taking that leap to just be like, okay, I'm going to move to uh, a new country, a new yes. city. I don't know anyone here and just kind of see how it goes. So I think the biggest change was like not being around family. Maybe I'll be showing my age a little bit because back then <laughs> I, it wasn't like you could just FaceTime and do iPhone and stuff like yeah. that. So like I would email my parents. Like, I wouldn't really call them because international calling costs is too expensive. Yeah. And I don't, I don't even think my phone could, yeah, I probably could, but I didn't even try it. Um, so I would mainly just send them like emails and stuff like that. And so it was at least my first year in college anyway. Um, and I had a Blackberry, so it was like, yeah. I, I don't know, I guess the biggest adjustment was like communicating with my family and stuff like that, not having as much communication with them when I moved out here. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. I thought mm-hmm. you were gonna say, you know what I thought I was, this is the answer. Your yeah, answer is much better than mine. A lot of people say when they come to the States that the food is the portions are so large compared yeah. to everywhere else and that's like, yeah is that no true? it's true that true? it's true but I think that it's ch- either my stomach has changed or the portion <laughs> sizes have changed because when I first came especially like I remember the first time that I'll go and like say I go to a drive through and they give me a drink and it's like a bucket and I'm like what am I supposed to do with this bucket of drink <laughs> like, in England, they do not give us drinks that are that big. Or like most times you'll go to a restaurant and you order a drink. You It's not refillable. So you get that one drink, you've got to sip it slowly because you know <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Actually, where did I go? Was it, was it, te- oh, something happened. Hold on. I've got a pop-up. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's gone. Right, sorry. Um, um, I went on a visit, I think it was when I went to, 
I can't remember what school. I went to somewhere, mm-hmm. and um, they we went to Red Robin. Was it Red Robin? Is it called Red it's Robin? It's the burger. Yeah, and yeah. then they had unlimited fries, yeah. unlimited drink, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with all this food? Like, and then they kept on taking us to new restaurants. I'm like, it's too much food. I'm gonna die here. Stuck <laughs> in my belly, like, oh my god. But um, yeah, so I feel like the food was like definitely biggest portions but I think over the years America's portion sizes have gotten smaller so it's kind of similar now I think okay <laughs> wow we're getting cheated on this side now that, not that that's what you said that's what I'm saying based on the information that you just shared with me I, no I, American has bigger sizes so technically that's better now <laughs> I don't know if it's it depends it depends yeah. on how hungry it depends on can More you bang for your- food again the next day yeah, more bang for your buck. Yes, because that's that's what we, we're looking for. It, it, we don't want a small stomach. We want the small stomach without it being small, you know. No. So, yes, enough about the food. I just was curious. Right. I was like, oh, my gosh. What, what's something that people don't know about you that is super cool, something that you think, Oh my gosh. Or a fun fact, really like a fun fact. What's something that, what's a hidden talent? <laughs> no, can you like juggle it? Can you, can you sing? What's something about you? I definitely can't sing. Okay. So that's that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if my dance moves are up there either. I don't know. That's a good question. I really don't know. What can I do? I don't know. Can what, you juggle? I... Can you do a head, a head, head stand? Handstand. Can I do a handstand? I can do a handstand. I can walk on my hands. Are you super flexible? Because I'm not flexible at all. Okay. (laughs) My flexibility is missing. That is bad. (laughs) Not at all. Okay. So tell us what got you into the long jump. Then what made of all the events that you could do in track and field? How did you get to the long jump? Um. So when I first started, I actually sprinted a little bit. I feel like a lot of people when they first like start in track they kind of like start off doing like running event running events more so so I started off like sprinting but I always used to see jumpers on the other side of the track and I used to be like I want to do that that looks fun I feel like I've always been like quite a bouncy and like energetic like person especially when I was younger and so um honestly I just think I used to see it on the other side of the track a lot and it was something I was interested in and the first time I actually entered the long jump like in a competition for real it was funny because I I, I, I entered it by accident because I used to do the hundred, high jump a little bit. Well. I, didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know what I was by doing. By accident, I, I have anything. to hear this. Uh-huh. And then, so the club that I used to run for, they used to have all of the, um, like, basically how you enter competitions. You go to the clubhouse, you pick out the forms, and then you just fill them out and then um, enter the meets. So it was like a two-day meet, which was nationals, but I didn't know it was nationals because I just picked all the papers up. And um, it was like, I was going to enter the 60 meters and the high jump. But like they were on two different days. And my mum was like, oh, because it was like far away from where we live. My mum was like, oh, we don't want to go for two days. So let's just do, she was like, just do the long jump instead. Just like, you know, because it was on the same day as the 60. So I thought, okay, I just entered it. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a runway. I didn't have anything. To be honest, I'm pretty sure I came, I probably came like last. But I really enjoyed it. And like when I competed, I was like, oh, this was fun. I really like doing this. So then I was like, okay, let me get a coach and like actually start training in the long jump and doing it a little bit more. And so I think after competing in it and really enjoying like doing it then I like found the coach and started to train in it and okay. um yeah I just kind of found it through like kind of a little bit of accident and curiosity mm-hmm. at the same time and what age were like, you not do- yeah what <laughs> age were you when you when this um, happened I started doing track when I was like 15 to be honest okay so it was kind of old old but young at the same time yes so same. Yeah. Like okay. Bloomer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Shout out to your mom. Okay. <laughs> you, you thought she was just trying to get you in and out, but really she was helping lead you to your destiny. Okay. Right. Get to your destiny. I love that. <laughs> Come through, mom. So tell us, tell us what it's been like as far as your journey. As you said, you've been to two Olympics, you've been to three plus world championship what's that been like for you as a jumper I feel like I have a perspective as a or in relays but in other events you know there are no there's no long jump relay 
you know they yeah. Are so yeah there's no oh i didn't if you don't place top three or tell us about that selection process for you because you're from great britain i know i have my own so just just give us a yeah. little insight about your journey and the process and and how it works and where you are now just leading up to being the 15 next team to to now yeah yeah so um it's funny because obviously the first team that I was actually trying to make that like, I really felt like I had the opportunity to make my a senior team was in 2012 okay. um that was the Olympics I was in London and I really wanted to go to like because I was like it's the home games yeah. and like I was so like I went to the trials I mean that year I was just you know continuing to like put PB up because that um that was my first I went to um to, I moved to Texas in 2011 so okay. that was my first season wow. in like training in the US I was obviously under a new coach and stuff like that but I was still with the goal of like going to the London Olympics and I jumped I was jumping very far so I jumped to PB I don't funnily enough the standard for the Olympics I think was 675 675 was the A standard and the B standard was maybe like 670 can't remember all the way and um, I've jumped 683 my first meet outdoors but it was windy so I was like I'm going <laughs> I, 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 I was, I'm going. I already knew, but I was like, I'm going. Yeah. Like, I've jumped the standard, obviously windy, but I'm going to get it again. And so, you know, obviously I spent the rest of the season like chasing the standard. Yeah. And then yeah. I got to the Olympic trials and I jumped 674. Wow. And the standard was 675. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. So I missed the team by one centimeter. And it was crazy because I remember doing jumping the 674 in round two. And I thought, oh, I've still got four more jumps yeah. so I'm gonna get it and I remember thinking like whoa because I remember when it came up on it like when I jumped the jump I looked at it and I thought I think I've done it and even my coach was like that was it and then when I looked at the board I was like ah because it was like 74 <laughs> ah like ah it was so close but then I feel like obviously missing out on that team by one centimeter kind of gave me that fire to be like okay mm -hmm. in 2013 I'm going to world championships like they're not leaving me behind I'm not and we're not doing this again like, I'm not doing it again I'm hitting the standard early and so I, I think for me that like, going into the 2013 season I've had a little bit more fire underneath me and you know like obviously I made that team I went to um, Russia and I mean I didn't really do the greatest when I got there but I knew that okay now I know I can make a team and then after that I continued to like you know kind of work towards like not really fighting to make the team but more so like try and contend when I get there and make the finals and stuff like that so yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. awesome that's correct one centimeter that's the only thing that I know about jumps that I'm you're not going to tell me oh you missed the board by that no I don't want to hear that that how yeah. do you know how do, it, is my toe really touching the line is my are you sure are right. you positive and so it's just it's something how you have to be so precise and mm -hmm. so what's the word that I'm looking for at technical mm -hmm. as far as jumps, what kind of jumper are you? I know that there's, there's like the hitch or, mm -hmm. and then there, yeah. what's the other one? Ah, the hang, there's a hitch. The hang, hang. Yes. Yeah. To be honest, I, I, I've done them all. I've done them okay. all. Okay. <laughs> I used to hang, I used to kind of do a mixture between the hitch and the hang, mm -hmm. and now I'm doing the double hitch. Okay. But, oh, wow, there's um, a double. There, you yeah, can do but not, not, not a lot of women do the double, though. And why is that? But is it common in, with the men? Yeah. That, the okay, men might so then the double, what, makes, but... what makes the double so, I don't know. I think you have, to, it's, it's, you have to have enough time in the air to be able to complete the double. Like, with the guys, they have more time in the air to, like, complete the double versus like for us I feel like for a lot of women they just do the single because I guess I don't know it just it, it it's easier to it's easier like, I don't know I don't know but for me I didn't to be honest the first time I did the double it was actually I just did it, it I just did it oh, wow. and then it kind of came naturally to me so it's something that I continue to do because it came naturally to me um but yeah I mean I've I've used the hang sometimes I, I don't mind the hang as well like it depends on how I feel to be honest oh wow that's something come on I can just switch it up if I want to hang I hang if I want to hitch I hitch you do what I want yeah. I'm, I'm all for that I'm all yeah. for that and so when it comes to the hitch and the hang what 
what helps you best? I remember we had Chris Nielsen on here as far as mm-hmm. pole vaulting, and he was trying to tell us and explain to us about the pole vault. What's something that you feel like athletes need to to have as far as being able to do these things efficiently and successfully as far as the hitch or the hang and, and long jumping just in, in general, what do you think it yeah. takes to, to be successful in the, in the long jump? Um, one of the first things is from, well, when I first started jumping, I used to, I used to hang and mm-hmm. I didn't have a lot of height. Well, so when I very first, first, first started, I didn't have a lot of height. So I used to kind of skim the sand. And okay. so one of the reasons why I originally started hitching was so it would give me more time to do something. I would skim the sand and land too early. So okay. it was like, I started hitching so that it would give me more time to do other things in the air before okay. I got to my landing. So it would give like, it would allow me to continue to propel forward versus I would hang and just go into the sand. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Obviously, as, I, as, my te- as my technique grew yeah. and as I got better technically, I learned how to hang and still be able to like maintain my posture and get further into the, further in. But originally I learned how to hang so that I would be in the air for longer if that makes sense it does make sense yeah um but I would say like to be a good well it depends because there's two different types of jumpers there's some like for me I'm a speed jumper okay so for me it's like I I run my speed is what carries me through the air once I take off okay so and so you do a lot of sprinting then yeah I do a lot of sprinting versus there's some athletes that uh, they may not be speed j- jumpers, but they're like power, they're more of a power jumper. Okay. They may not run that fast, but their power will take them. Do you get what I mean? Yes. So it's kind of like, it's hard to say like what exactly it is, but I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, that obviously being powerful will help you more than anything anyway. Yes. And kind of like just having like sometimes breaking down the jump into pieces, like especially if you're first starting, it's about like breaking the jump into like, Obviously, the landing, yes. standing long jump, working on the landing, working on your takeoff. Oh, standing long jump on... helps you because you know I do standing long jump, and I feel like my landing is so cute. I don't know if it's supposed to be <laughs> or not, but I feel yeah. like I try to channel my inner long jumpers, and they're not impressed. I must say, they're like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool, but I feel like this is what y'all are doing. Like y'all do this. Look- like little landing. I feel like it used to be like a landing twirl, but now it's like a landing hop out because you don't want nothing to touch the sand. I'm like, yeah. Oh, okay, now I got to work on a landing hop out because I used to be a landing <laughs> twirl. And I used to, I'm like, man, I feel like this is real. It's very dramatic. And I want this, yeah. to be like, it's like swishing a circle and nah. hit the, hit the, um, the line judges in the face with the sand like that. <laughs> I feel like that's how I'm like that was, was a splash. Shot. Shot. Yes, but uh, y'all are upgrading from that. Y'all are going to very precise. Like I'm, I'm. You know, you do your hitch or your double hitch, and then you land hit. It, y'all are quick. Y'all hit the sand and y'all be like, okay, I'm. I'll I'm be ready out, to get out. Jump out and you like, <laughs> okay, what's the jump? So now I have to start working on that. So when I, when I do that, I'm gonna. I'm gonna send you the video first. Yeah. Right, so you me. Let me so you see. Can let me Put know, it. and Put or it. we can do like a side by side, like when people say they can long jump, and then I'll be the people, but you'll be the <laughs> real long jumper. So we we can do that. And you know that reminds me of that man that was trying to tell you that he could race you. That man with the pot belly. Oh my! Trying goodness. to say he could race you at the, at the car park. At the car wash. <laughs> he was something else, and he just I knew. Wanna... Talking about some lunch. Sir, you're, you're going to be hungry because you're going to be buying me lunch. It was a mess. He really thought. And I was like, you race ki- you race the kids. I'm like, are they elementary? Who, like, who are you racing? The- you're not racing the high schoolers and Listen, beating them. I still want to see that race. I feel like we need to, we need to make it happen. We, need to, we I, need to start throwing in some regular people into the races. So I they can see. And into the long jump. <laughs> That I can only imagine going, and to me, I think I call it full speed. But y'all are sprinting down the runway. Even the people who are powerful, y'all are gaining momentum. Y'all are, y'all, you gotta hit. Do you know what happens when my foot hit the the track flat? I lose momentum, right? (laughs) Y'all are like, y'all are taking that and turning to power, and y'all are like, like you said, it's like the. The like y'all be in the air for a long time. I'm like, dang. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, 
I'm just super. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree with you. We got to get some people jumping. We got to get some people sprinting and throwing because all of that. That I don't think people really realize what we're doing. Yeah, how well we're doing it. Um, let's see. This is Max when they let long jump. He doesn't want this. Oh, yeah, that, that that probably is. People really just it we you Even, make it easy. You make it look easy. Yeah. I feel like there was easy. a there was a video circulating where there was this um I think it was a coach that was racing his athlete. <laughs> oh the man. You see it and he almost broke his back <laughs> on the racer. I thought, look, sometimes you gotta hang it out, let it go. The yeah. man, he was at least 50, he was at least 50 oh to 60s. God. And he was racing, his, he was like telling her, I could beat her out of the blocks, yeah, blah, 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 going on and on. And he almost broke, I'm pretty sure he pulled a muscle in his back. I said, I'm you see? sure. Sometimes I'm rest. Sure. <laughs> I am sure. So many young kids all the time ask to race me. If they see me, do you get that same thing in long jump? Do you get people mm-hmm. or kids are like, I, I can jump further. Like, you can't jump further than me. No, nah, I don't think they, they don't. No! Know. People be trying to race me sometimes, but I feel like whether I'm a long jump or not, they'll be like, oh, let me race you. Or they'll be like, oh, what's the full time? I might have done have one. <laughs> but I know I have one. No. None of us, very few of us do. It's, it's, they got to get it together. You probably would beat them in the 40 still. I, I don't get why they don't get that. I, no. They don't understand that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what I'm most excited about, well, I'm glad to hear your story. Another thing before I ask you about this, your accent, right? Yeah. It's so funny because people from the UK are very serious. I'm like, I don't sound like, they're from West London. They're from Birmingham. I'm like, I know all y'all from over there. Like Matthew (laughs) Hudson Smith, like to me, even though to me you Matthew Hudson Smith Dina I know that all of y'all are from the the UK from your well me accent. me and Dina are basically both from South London so we okay and where's Matt similar. from oh, Birmingham you know. y'all, no, y'all but that's like, words the same no but do you know what it's like it's like being that like, oh yeah someone from New York and someone from Louisiana they sound the same no! Like, no, that's how different they are. No way. No, they sound different. Yeah, they, like it's different. Like you, yeah. Y'all that's sound how the it, same. That's like being like, oh yeah. I can tell that both. We, I can tell that all three of y'all are from the UK. Y'all He's accent. Like, Matthew's it, accent is definitely different. But some it's of different. the way that y'all pronounce the words are the same. That's the, no, but I know, but then that would be the same as like New York versus California. Okay, let's just let's. I feel like Louisiana might be a little bit. Yeah, because um, but okay, New York versus California, it's two different accents. Yeah, because California, they, they, don't, they still say they don't have any accent. Same. When you're from California, you don't have any accent. California has an accent versus no. New York. A Brooklyn accent. No. A Brooklyn accent versus now, a Texas accent. Now, if you would have said like. Philly in New York, I could have been like, okay, I kind of, mm. they, they kind of, one of them, nah, cause it, different parts of America have one different of them accents. is saying, but us, we're kind of timber, <laughs> they got on, no way, I'm See, a- but when I first came, everyone sounded similar, I, I, like, a lot, I couldn't tell state to state, like, obviously, I've been here long enough that I can tell state to state accents a little bit more, yeah. but, like, at first, that like, a lot of it just sounded American. I mean, I could tell a New York accent versus, yeah. but that's because of TV, though. That's more like TV shows and oh, stuff. TV. So you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> TV really got you mm-hmm. saying, "Okay, this is New York." You feel like yeah. the accurate depiction of the the New York shows are accurate of? Mm, I don't know because I watched Stump the Yard, and I thought, "Okay, that's what <laughs> probate like." Then I went to my first probate. I said, "This ain't Stump the Yard." No, <laughs> no, it wasn't. Not, no, not it wasn't. Right. It wasn't. No. Not quite. <laughs> this is not stump the yard. This, this is, is not stump the yard at all. Okay, stump the <laughs> yard. So enough about enough about accents and stump the yard. I I I still can't believe. What stump the yard? Oh yeah, the, the, I'm thinking about drumline. I was about to say they had drums. Drumline. Okay, 
Okay, yeah. I get you. They both got Nick Cannon. No, I can't remember now. It's okay. I don't think he's. I think Nick Cannon's in it. Look at me. But they I were mean, doing. It was like they would. Was it a dance? It's not me. I was like a. More so a dance battle. They were dance battling, right? It wasn't. There wasn't a probate. It was somewhere. It was. Somewhere. There was a probate in it, though. Yes, there was definitely a probate. Okay. In it. And the okay. probate that I went to didn't look like from the. Uh, it, <laughs> it didn't. It wasn't. The, it wasn't quite the same. Time. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask you about that another time. Another mm. time. <laughs> we're not, you know, we're not on camera that way. It'll be all hearsay. It'll just you know, I can't I can't put it back to you. It's just mm-hmm. I heard it. you know a little bird mm-hmm. told me. So tell me about unsigned. Tell the audience about unsigned. Why you started it? What it means to you in the sport and what you hope to achieve moving forward, even after you're done competing. What unsigned is is for the sport of track and field and and things like that and for the athletes yeah so basically i originally i started on unsigned because i noticed that a lot of athletes especially like athletes that were like world class that are going to world champs or olympians that are at the highest level of the sport were getting dropped by their sponsors and i noticed that it was like we like we're competing at the highest level and we're not really getting like the deals that I feel like we deserve to have. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like, instead of like continuing to sit and wait for somebody to sponsor me, I figured I would start my own brand and I would use the name of unsigned as like a reclaim for, because I know sometimes people, they don't have a contract and they're kind of like still wearing their old gear and Mm -hmm. like they're making it, they're not making it obvious that they don't have like the sponsorship that, that, do you know what I mean? And there's, there's I figured, yeah, I would. I'm like, I don't want to wear mine at all. Yeah, I'm like, literally. I need to find something else. Yeah, but no, you're so, right. You're right. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it's fine. So I kind of like started unsigned as a way to kind of like start a brand that will be for athletes, from an athlete to other athletes, and kind of like as a way to showcase yourself as not being um, signed, and like for for fans to kind of step in to like help to elevate the brand and also so mm-hmm. that the brand can give back to athletes when, if it wants to get to that point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so that's why I kind of started it as like a way to you know, bridge the gap, have a brand that was for athletes and for us and for world-class athletes and to allow us to kind of take take back that um, us, the sponsorship opportunities into our own hands and also to kind of like try and build a community because I feel like there's a lot of fans and people that want to support and that, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. they, they don't know how to support. So it's kind of like by showcasing yourself as being unsigned, it allows people in your community to be like, I can help you with this, I can help mm-hmm. you with that. And so that's kind of like why I originally started it to kind of be a way for us to bring back community and helping each other and finding a way to, you know, like, I don't know, just like, I don't know, like, Get our power, get yeah. get your yeah. power back. It, it's something when you go from being signed to unsigned, you know that you're still worthy. And that's something that I, I spoke about myself. Yeah. Just to prove to myself, like I still have worth, whether or not I, I have a contract with a major shoe brand or if I have a shoe deal or even a kit deal. There's so many different deals out here in the sport and I love what I love what you're doing. I think it's really important for the sport and it really as I said puts the power back into the hands of the athletes because if I'm going to be able if I'm going to be buying my own shoes and my own clothing and warm-ups and things like that it's it's something because people still they when they watch they say oh this person is wearing and it's something like we might know as athletes but I don't know if other people know. Say, like, they don't yeah it's like, like oh they they're wearing Nike but it's like no this is just a Nike top and maybe a Nike bottoms it, it, it I have really no affiliation with this brand but you're still promoting this particular brand yeah and so I think that this gives people especially the athletes an opportunity to promote themselves in a the sense of like you said somebody says, oh, wow, it's, it's unsigned. What does that mean? How can I help? And so, yeah, so that's what I want to, I see yeah. you here at the sewing machine. <laughs> yes, how was that? Is that something you picked up? That, look, that's something my mom picked up. There in yeah. She's like, go get you a sewing machine. I looked, I'm like, did you, did you see what I saw? The same numbers? 
I'm like, you got 401k, okay? (laughs) But investing in a good one, I was told, is really important. And so how how did that really help you with your brand and with just your ideals as far as sewing and putting it together? When I first started, honestly, it's something that I think I'm quite, I can be quite impulsive sometimes. So I think one day I thought, "Mm." no, do you know what it was? Over the summer, I think I was like buying a lot of clothes and like buying a lot of like stuff like that. And I thought, you know what, you've taken it too far. And I was like, if you're going to keep wanting to wear a lot of clothes and stuff like that, I was like, I decided I'm going to try and earn it. So I was like, if I'm going to do it, let me try and like make some pieces anyway. Because sometimes in my head, I'm like, oh, I want, I would, I'm looking for certain things that, that I don't know that necessarily exist. Okay. And so I just like, okay, I want something that looks like this. And I'll start looking for it. And I thought, so let me try and make it. So I kind of just like ordered a uh, sewing machine on Amazon. Okay. I, I read the reviews. I was like, okay, this one looks all right. And it was really, really priced. I didn't go and buy like a crazy expensive yeah. one or anything like that. And honestly, it was just like, I just, found some like I looked at like the shapes of some of the stuff I already had in my closet and I kind of like traced like su- like sh- sizing based mm-hmm. on some of the stuff that I already had mm-hmm. and I kind of just like winged it honestly like when I first started sewing it was just like it's like a jigsaw puzzle like mm-hmm. I'm putting pieces like once you cut all the pieces you kind of just jigsaw them together and sew it together so it's really not it's not as hard as it seems yeah. the worst part is like cutting and sewing and making sure that they're the right sizes and the right shapes and it fits where it's supposed to fit and yeah. do you know what I mean yes but once you get once you've like jigsawed it together it's really not that bad so actually that was something that I kind of just like I just picked up because I thought you know why not like I don't know I just sometimes I just think let me try this and let me try that and then I'll just yeah. like try it to see so yeah I think that the sewing that I probably don't sew as much right now but yeah. like at first that was something that I just would do to kind of pass time and kind of just try something new so yeah yeah that's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm gonna ooh, I'm gonna look into trying to sew, but like you said, I I gotta have an impulse, like you said. Yeah. I'm not in it. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when you drink coffee and you're like, yeah, 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 let's go. And then you're like, Well, <laughs> let me tell you about it. No, the thing is also you can buy a lot of like what they call they're called like patterns. Mm-hmm. So it's like you can go to even like um what's it called joanna fabric and yeah. stuff like that and they have like shapes of different stuff mm-hmm. so you can like get the shapes of the pieces that you need and it will give you the instructions on how to sew it together mm-hmm. so like it's actually quite it's not that like, you can find the shapes and the pieces that you need to cut and then it will tell you that cut it so this together then that bit then that part and that part so it's like it's something that you could do without like you could actually it's not that hard to do if you actually wanted to try it if that makes sense okay first i gotta get the sewing machine though All yeah right. I <laughs> that, then i can i can work on so i'm gonna take, I'm gonna take my steps i'm gonna go i'm gonna go on amazon yeah <laughs> we'll look for a sewing machine unless they got one enjoying fabrics that's on sale they probably have two they might do sometimes they do yeah. okay i'm gonna check first if they don't then i'm I'm going on Amazon. <laughs> okay. And I'm going I'm to let you know how it goes. I might uh, want to make something cute first. I don't even think I, you know, I'm like, oh, because I saw you yeah. had some clothes so you just didn't make, you yeah. know, you just make it. So I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. One of the things that I found, especially with like trying to find patterns and mm-hmm. stuff was that I feel like a lot of the patterns I found was like for like older clothes, like like old like not like the young fashionable clothes like do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. I'm like someone needs to make some fashionable <laughs> patterns for us do you know what I mean but I feel like yeah. because older older people are more so the people that are sewing yeah so that's why they have it like do you know what I mean yes so it's like some, what you're some saying of... is we need to come out with patterns that we can sell to the store about you need to sell patterns yeah. for your stuff to the store the only thing is I d- making patterns is hard. It's like, because you have to have, it has to be multiple sizes. You have to have the shapes, right? You have to, yeah. and sometimes I just be cutting stuff and I'm like, oh, this is wrong. <laughs> I'll undo it. And I'll just cut more off and be like, all right, now this is going to work. Like, you know what I mean? I just cut more out. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is too funny. Okay. So baby steps then. I'm just going to yeah. go back to the sewing machine <laughs> before I even do with the pattern. Yeah. Okay. Tell, tell us what your goals are for this year. What do you want to achieve 
in the long jump and just in the sport in general, what do you want? What's your goals for this year? If you, if you can share one with us, yeah. doesn't have to be super specific. I know some people are like, look, I ain't jumping in my seat. <laughs> and so I understand that yeah. as well, but what's something that well, you can do? For us in the UK, there's like three championships this year. So obviously there's the world championship. It's crazy. I'm real jealous about that, but go ahead. Just... The com- yeah, the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. And then we also have the European championships. Although I'm not going to do all three because I think that's a bit much for me anyway. Okay. I probably will target the world championships and the Commonwealth Games, especially because okay. the Commonwealth Games are in the UK. Oh, wow. And yeah. So I think for me, it will definitely be, you know, trying to get on the podium at yeah. least one of these champions there's three yes. of them let me try one at least one yes. let me try at least one of them <laughs> one yes what do you think so, it's going to take to get on the podium i think that you know it's going to take the, the jump the 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 distance the the jumps have been i mean the women's long jump has just been going from strength to strength like they're <laughs> listen, listen people are jumping jumping I, like seven meters mm-hmm uh-huh. And even seven meters, like, I, I could, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody went to world championships, jumped mm-hmm. seven meters, and did not get on the podium. Wow, that's how deep it is right now. Okay, so yeah, at least seven meters at, at worlds anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, seven meters. How yeah. is that? Let me tell you, I'm always going on my phone to convert. I'm like, you know what? <sighs> I wish we just had the metric system. I don't know why. We got I think the, the U.S. needs to transfer over because <laughs> everywhere else in the world yeah. does meters. And even when I came to the um, university in the U.S. and I started jumping, I had no idea what I was jumping. Oh, wow. Because they'll be saying 20 feet this and 21 feet. I'm like, I used to go to my training park and say, what's that? I used to have to ask them to translate because I had no idea. So I think that that's also probably a little bit of a barrier when people are watching and they're yeah. just like, mm-hmm. I don't understand what this is. Because when they were in high school, or middle school, or where, whatever, it was in feet. So then yeah. when they're watching it, they're like, I don't even know what this means. So yeah. I think they should just transfer it over for the younger generation and just like be a transition, especially because prof- professionally they don't show feet at all. So Yeah, they don't. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to work on that. If I'm <laughs> a coach, you know, a high school coach, on the le- I got to know them. The basics, I'm gonna be like, okay, I need, I'm gonna I'm make sure the kids know both. Meters, yes, yeah. For sure, the yeah. meters. But I'm like, I don't know. Like, come on. It's like, what was that? Two meters? Oh, baby, I, this might not be uh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just how I jump. Then it's like, oh, yeah, what? right. And then it's like, hey, you, you special. Well, I just got something, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's get you out here. If you could do any other event in track and field, what event would it be? If you could do any, and you know mm. that you would be good at it. Mm. It's like you would be top 10 in the world. What event would you do? You know, outside the long jump, like, you know, like, okay, I'm, or top eight in the world. You know, you know I'm going to, a, I'm always going to make a final here. I'm going to, what event would you do? You know, I'm going to the blue ribbon. 100 meters, man. What? Some small shine. Yeah, I'm gonna say you said I want all the smoke. Come on, yeah. come on. Why the hundred? It's so it's so hard though. It's no, but you said you know I know I'm you're gonna, gonna be the final. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> you said the hundred. I was waiting. I said I wonder what she's gonna choose. You said the hundred. Yeah. Well, I feel like those that also goes with the. With the long jump, like that would just be an addition yeah. to help you with the yeah. long jump. You know, yeah. It weren't going to be the four hundred. I don't know how you got <laughs> my lactic, the way my lack picks it up. Mm-mm. It could have been. Mm-mm. It could have been the hurdles. You could have said hurdles. You could have said the pole vault. No, 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 no. Jump. You could <laughs> the javelin. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no, no Let no. me just run. Just run yeah okay oh my goodness that is too funny what's what's some advice you would just give to somebody in the sport who maybe they're experienced that roller coaster they're experiencing maybe a down shift in in their season or somebody who's 
just trying to figure it out, what advice would you have for them as far as the sport and what's necessary to be to really be sustained in the sport? Um, I think for me, I would say that the advice that I would give is to always, I think always, like, especially when you're in the sport and it's not going so well, is to like try to find joy in not just, not in not just like track and the, yeah. the training and stuff like that, but also in just life in general. Do you know what I mean? Because I mm-hmm. feel like sometimes when your main focus is on track and just being like track, 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 and then it's not going well, I feel like yeah. it makes it seem like your whole life is like not going well. Mm-hmm. But when you find joy in things outside of track and in track, and you like try to enjoy the training, enjoy competing, and not yeah. focus so much on like the bad things that are happening then I feel like at least you know that like while you're doing it and while you're competing in it, you're enjoying yourself and you're having fun. It's something that you're still finding joy in. That I feel like when it's like, you know, it's something that you can say, you know, I'm still having fun doing this. I'm still like, do you know what I mean? And it doesn't become such a pressure thing and such a, do you know what I mean? So I would say like, obviously enjoy it when you're having, when you're doing well, but then like still try to find joy in like when it's not going so well and like find the things that you enjoy. like sometimes I think like you know when you're doing track and you weren't doing it for money and you weren't doing yeah. it to be professional you were doing it because you enjoyed it and it was fun yeah Do you know what I mean so it's like trying to get back to what was fun about it what's nice about it, what you enjoyed about it if even if when it's the, you're not getting the results that you want and sometimes that will allow you to still like you know if you're still traveling with the sport and you're still able to be, go to international places meet new people yeah. experience food out there experience find something that you can experience that you can still feel like you know my result might not have gone as I wanted but you know I'm still meeting great people I'm making like great connections but there's certain things that you can do outside of like do you know what I mean I don't know yeah that's, it might not that's be great necessary. advice yes yeah. you gotta give the people some advice you gotta find something to joy in in and out of the sport and I think that's so true what you said a lot of times when the sport's not going well you it just bleeds over into your regular life. You're like, oh, all these things. It's like, actually, you got a lot of things to celebrate and to joy in. And so I'm so glad that you said that and you shared that with us all. I think that's just, it's like a breath of fresh air. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. you gotta preach it. You gotta say it. Yeah. So what's one place that you, outside of the UK, just to make it fair, just I feel like whenever you can I'm for real whenever you can compete in front of your family and friends that's that's just something that I feel like most people would choose because it's so hard when like you said we went to worlds in Moscow and it was like I ain't have a lot of family and friends like yeah we not we won't be there (laughs) where is something that you love to jump a place that you love to compete at that's like I said outside of the UK Mm, mm, that's a tricky one do you know what um oh it's hard. that's tricky because I mean I would say okay can I pick two yes you can pick two I'll, <laughs> I'll pick two I'll pick the first one being I actually quite enjoy competing in Oregon I know okay. that Oregon is really good at like filling out the crowds they're good mm-hmm. at having a good atmosphere I know that like it's track town so they love track in Oregon so that's why I'm kind of looking forward to world championships being there because I know that they just love track out there yeah but also one of my favorite championships was actually um, in Australia, the Commonwealth Games, yeah. which was in Australia. Yeah. And like, I re- that was a, like, that championships, was, I really enjoyed it because one, the Commonwealth Games, obviously USA is not part of it, but like, um, it's something that's like, it's still a high quality competition, but it's, but like, it's also quite fun and chill at the same time. Mm. So I feel like you get to have the balance of like enjoying the competition and also like it's a high color it's quite a high caliber at the same time and then like because it was in australia we got to like experience being on the other side of the world Mm. we saw the kangaroos we saw the weather we saw the beach we saw do you know what i mean so i feel like we had a good mixture of like actually experiencing the country and also competing there and they filled out the crowds really really well so i really enjoyed competing in australia for that reason um so i'm just again okay yeah. Another Commonwealth, you know, something else, like you said, we're not a part of. Mm-hmm. Yes, we can be a part of everything. But yeah, I've never been to Australia, but I've heard great things about it. So I'm happy to hear you say that. And yeah. I probably won't be there competing because I'm not going to be a part of the Commonwealth. But I'm going to go to <laughs> visit and that way I can at least see the kangaroos. Yeah. Um, it's funny because I feel like 
Australia hosts the Commonwealth Games quite a lot, but they've never really hosted like world champs or oh, like know. anything like that. Um, unless I make, actually, I might, I might be like, 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 let me keep quiet. Australia need to put the bid in for the world championships. I don't they know when, have, when they go get not, it, but go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, we're calling it now. We <laughs> want to go to Australia too. Okay. <laughs> we want to go down under. Okay. I don't want the Aussie fries from Outback. I want the real. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know if that's a thing. So, yes, I got to find a way to get there. So, you didn't say it. I said it that way. I just <laughs> bad if it's bad, I'll take it. If it's good, I'll say you said it. But if it's but, not, <laughs> but I mean, if not, just the trip for vacation, I'm sure yes. it'll be enjoyable because it was yeah. I actually really enjoyed it out there. Man, I gotta get out there. Okay, before we go, one question I always ask is well, there's gonna be two really. The okay. first is Dang, I don't want to ask that one second. What were you thinking when, because I don't know if you saw it, your bronze medal, what were you thinking when you won your medal or right before you won the bronze medal, right before you did the bronze medal jump? What were you thinking during? Um, it's funny because obviously, you talking about World Indoors this year. Yes. I, um, I'd done two files. Oh, wow. So I was like, don't do this, Lorraine. Don't <laughs> come out here. Do three files and get knocked out. Because, you know, I did not fly all the way out here to get knocked out. So I was like, you need to get it together. And my head, I was like, I can't believe I've put this pressure on myself to go and have to get this jump in. <laughs> like, wow. Well, I was like, no, please. So in my head, I was thinking, please, just get it together. And also I was thinking, you know, like I knew I was capable of jumping like a decent jump. Yeah. And so obviously I took the jump and my coach told me to move closer to the board. I'd fouled twice. He told me to move closer, which obviously normally people think move back. Back, yeah. But he was like, move closer. Cause like there's certain check marks that we have on the runway and I was outside of my check mark, but still fouling. So he was oh, like, wow. just move closer. And I thought I'm going to trust him. I'm just going to do this. And like, I just have to, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I fouled out a few times. To be okay. honest, even when I went to Moscow, 2013 I did three fouls oh. <laughs> so I've, yeah I've done it before and I'm like you no we're not doing this like please <laughs> get it together so obviously once I when I got that jump in I thought okay thank like I'm glad that I've managed to get a decent jump in and like you know at the time I think that put me into second mm -hmm. at the time maybe second off I can't remember now but either way I was like you know like I was, I was obviously when it finished, I was happy to like, I've gotten on the podium yeah. and I obviously I came back from like, I had surgery on my hamstring, oh, wow. you know, I, I felt like I was on a, on a, especially during the indoors, I was really, that's when I was really talking about not being signed, not being sponsored, yeah. having the sponsors really not like take me on. And, and like, so mm -hmm. I wanted to prove that like, I'm good enough to be on the podium. I'm good enough to contend yeah. with the best in the world. And I felt like, you know, I wanted to show that I was deserving of being sponsored. And I felt like, especially when I was starting unsigned, I felt like, you know, being able to get on the podium and kind of showcase that, like, this is what I'm talking about when I say we're contending with the best in the world and I'm, and, like, I'm not getting the, the help and the support, especially financially, that I needed. So, you know, just having that there, it's like, you know. Yeah. I don't know. That's me just being like, I'm glad that I was able to yeah. showcase that by yeah. being on the podium, you know. Come through podium. <laughs> Come on, get another podium finish. Yes. Yes. You gonna, Don't do you it again outdoors. It. Yes. <laughs> so lastly, what does it take to be the greatest? Oof. In your opinion, what does it take? Oof. I think it takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of sacrifice. One of the biggest things, especially in track and field, is like sacrifice. Like you're going to sacrifice a lot of stuff. You're going to miss a lot of events. You're going to miss a lot of, do you know what I mean? But you're going to have to put in that work and then like I hope that it comes back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like in order to be the greatest, you're going to have to do certain things like and, and like miss events and put in that hard work and like go hard. Like there's times where you're going to be on the track dying. Like, am I crazy? Why am I doing this? But you have to keep going. Even in the long day, I can't imagine what the 400 meter and 800 meter work like. <laughs> Even in the long day, I'll be on the floor collapsed. Like, who asked? Like, 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 do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm just like, 
it's like you just have to you know just keep grinding keep working keep going hard keep thinking about what that goal is in your head and just like driving towards it and like having that focus to be like this is my goal this is what I'm working towards and like regardless of what might try to derail that you just have to try and stay on that path to be like this is what I've got to do to get there so like I have to tunnel vision it so yeah come on tunnel vision (laughs) ah that is great this has been a great show I'm glad that you've been able to just share your story with us share your brand and share what you're doing to to me this is furthering the sport this is going to help like you said not only yourself but other athletes who are working as hard as they can who are sacrificing as much as they can and they're unsigned and I'm I'm so glad that you're doing what you are and that you just have this vision and this passion and I just pray that it just continues to to move forward and like I said this is going to be a part of the sport I'm sure even once you decide you know what I done got on this. Look, I said I was getting on a podium. I done got on two or three podiums. (laughs) Got another Olympics. I done got there. When you decide that you want to retire, what you're doing now is still going to live on in the sport. And so I think that's really awesome. So tell people where they can find you, where they can follow you. They can teach you, you know. Yeah. So first of all, if you want to support me, you want to support other unsigned athletes, go to unsignedsport.com. Grab, you know, those socks, duffel bags, hoodie, tracksuits, little bits and pieces. It's still kind of in a soft launch phase. So obviously, as it continues to grow, then there'll be more items on there. But for now, that's what's available. Um, or you can follow on at Unsigned Sport. And obviously, on my page personally is at Lorraine, again, Lorraine, L-O-R-R-A-I-N-E-U-G-E-N. So, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can find us at world's greatest team on ig you can follow our youtube world's greatest you can follow us on twitter world's greatest without all the vials hey i did it this week hey i I got i got the three platforms okay bob you should be very proud of me thank you i look i'm saying all this and i'm i'm just really being confident i'm not completely sure but it felt right it felt right when it when it left my mouth it felt right mm-hmm. and you can follow me at rain two on instagram or run to rain on twitter please please support lorraine what she's doing it's down here in the um chat just about unsignedsport.com that's what you said right Unsigned, yeah yeah sport.com Sport. yeah Hey, people want always say, how can we help track and field? How can we bring more attention to it? How can we bring, you know, more athletes together? How can we do all these things? We support projects like this. We support passions like this. And we continue to support the athletes who are the sport. We are the sport. And so thank you for joining me on what were you thinking tonight on World's Greatest with Lorraine. Okay, South, right? Then you say South London. South London, yeah. South yeah. London, British long jumper, bronze medal, mm-hmm. Olympian. She she said she getting back on the podium. So <laughs> we'll we'll see her after she get on the podium. Like we're gonna have a, another conversation, especially after Commonwealth that's gonna be held in the UK, which is pretty yeah. cool. I'm be like, hey. What's going on? You know, it's going to be emails and and world's greatest. So thank you for joining me. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And we'll see you next time on World's Greatest. What were you thinking? All right. right. See you guys. Peace. Bye.